Okay. But before I do that, I'm going to take a rag and I'm just going to roll it up into a nice little cushiony ball like this. All right. And I want something on the lower horizon here of uh, maybe some sun. So I'm going to actually remove some paint, put some white in there, and then I'm going to overlap the trees into that. So what I'm going to do now, it's not going to show up very well, but see, I'm taking a circle about that big. About two inches yep, diameter? Yep, two, two and a half inch diameter. And I'm putting it right through where that line is. So that horizon line is right through the center of that circle. I see. This isn't going to show up really well, but it'll make more sense here in just a second. Got my canvas falling off here. I'm getting rid of the excess paint. Then I am going to wash my fan brush. Alrighty. Because I've still got that yellow from when we did the line way back when. I'm going to pick up some of this firm white off the palette. This is titanium white. A good amount of paint, really loading the brush up nice and heavy, lots of paint. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to kind of paint that circle. And this is, that's not the sun. Everybody's going to say, oh my goodness, he's lost his mind. <laughs> looks like a huge sun, looks like Jupiter. What I'm going to do is take this and kind of blend this out. I want a brighter glare there. It's going to be construed as a glare. We know the sun's behind there, but it's not going to be the actual sun. Okay. We're going to superimpose trees above that. I want to make this a little lighter so our darks will really pop off there. See, I want it softer in the water, softer in the sky around it. Just It's going to be a bright glare more than anything. All right, so we'll start with a, we're going, I guess, slightly in between the middle and the right-hand yep. side, and I'm just going to... Yep, just like that. Kind of carve in a little... Yep. All we're doing is taking some of that paint out of harm's way, because if we try to put that white in there over the top of all that yellow, it's not going to be very bright. All righty. All right, perfect. Okay. And then you just paint it in with some thick white on your fan brush. See, it doesn't show up very well right now. Once we put some of this dark land in here, that's really going to show up more. And the nice part is if it didn't show up as bright as you thought, you can actually come in and put a little more white right in the middle of that to really brighten it up. It makes it really pop. Right. We're looking for light and dark contrast on this. Right now we got a lot of lights and mid-tones in that sky and water. We don't have anything dark. Once we start carving some darks through here, it's really going to stand out. Okay, so I have There you go. Now wipe your brush off. Okay. And around the perimeter, you just want to kind of fluff it. it. Yeah, fluff it and pull it out. It, yeah. Yep. Dissolve the hard edge so it doesn't look like we uh, outlined a coffee mug on there. <laughs> it was a coaster. <laughs> this takes me back to my old days. Uh, back when I first started out teaching, I actually started out, I was hanging some of my first early paintings in some of the local restaurants and banks. Uh, guy approached me and wanted to know if I could teach him painting. That's how I got started on this path. And I was actually doing a one-on-one -on -one with a fellow for several months until some of his friends joined on and other people started hearing about it and just kind of evolved from there. So this is just like old times to me. Hey. You're taking me back 20 years, Mike. You're welcome. <laughs> Stroll down memory lane. All righty. All right. Okay, now I'm going to switch over. I'm going to lay that brush to the side. I'm going to take this one inch scenery brush. Kay. I love this brush for foliage. The reason I had this designed with the bevel on it is we can actually load it like this and really open that corner up. Mm -hmm. Some really nice uh, effects with it. I'm going to actually take, now the, since this is a silhouette, this can afford to be quite dark. So I'm actually going to, believe it or not, I'm going to take red, a little yellow. I want something kind of orangey and warm. It won't be a burnt sienna color, but I want something that's kind of an orange, kind of a yellowy orange, maybe something like this. And see, it's, it's going to be a texture stroke, so you want to get enough paint on your brush. Notice I'm kind of loading it on the top corner of that. Of the edge. That's the important part where we're going to do all the, all the work is on that top corner. And see, I just tap it like this, and really, I think you're going to need a little more paint in your puddle there, Mike. But just See, you should be able to actually see a texture right on your... All right. right on your palette. And the brush should look very open and loose like that and spread out, not matted together. Like that? There you go. Hey. Now, see, we got a lot of paint, so we can afford to use a light touch. All right. So let's practice here first. If you were a major league pitcher and they called you in out of the bullpen, you'd get a couple warm-up throws, right? I would hope so. All right. Well, I like to be fair, too. So see, if you take this like this and you just touch 
it gives you that nice loose leafy texture. Now you don't want to work the same area too much if you keep working the same area. See that looks pretty good. It looks like trees. Right. But if you keep working it, working it, working it, it starts getting really solid. Right. And then it tends to lose that airiness and doesn't look quite as much as like trees. So. Okay, so just. It's all in the touch. You got it. That's it. That's all there is to it. This bevel on this brush makes that so easy. Okay. Yep. Now, so you've knocked all the paint off on that practice board, so you're going to have to pick up more on your palette. I actually had to mix up a little more. I'm not going to use this throughout. Um, I'm going to have this kind of around this sun glow. Now, it's probably a good idea right now. I can tell, experience tells me that I'm going to have to thin this down a little bit. So I'm going to take a little bit of this clear medium, just enough to thin the consistency a little bit. It'll help it stick over all this paint, because we've got a lot of paint on this canvas so far. So like I said at the beginning, you have to thin this, these subsequent layers down to stick over the, right. the thicker stuff. Alrighty. So I'm going to kind of fashion this in my mind. I'm looking at my horizon. Let me draw you a little sketch here. Remember that initial line that we had on here? I can still see it in that white right there. It's visible. This is going to be my shoreline. I'm going to have trees on the top side and then reflections of those trees below. But I want some of that bright sunlight to peek through there. So you might want to mark yours out too. It's nice to have a map. And then I just take this and I'm going to carve this out a little bit underneath that sunspot. And see, I want it warmer here. We're going to get progressively darker with this foliage as we go towards the edges. I want this to really burn like the sun's shining through right there. That's why I'm going a little orangey. Okay. As I go darker, you're going to see it's going to be get more and more dramatic. Think of your sunspot and leave some of that light showing above your tree line. Oh, you're a natural. It's all the wrist, you know. Yeah, it, really it, it is. I better watch out. You're gonna have my job. What I want painting with Mikey G. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and I'm gonna just bring that a little bit, maybe an inch or two to the right and left of that sunspot. Underneath there, I'm going to kind of do the same thing, but I'm doing it upside down. See, I'm kind of working from that. I'm trying to mirror it. Mirror. And you're holding the brush upside down? I'm actually holding it at this angle, but I'm when I tap, I'm tapping downward. Okay. Okay. Just kind of stretching the bristles down. The water won't have to be nearly as exact because we're going to smear that. We want to make it a little blurry. Yeah, you want to maintain a little bit of the texture in it, just like you're doing. Yep. Yeah, and fill in these holes a little bit. Okay. There we go. Easy as pie. Now, from there, I want to start darkening the value. Remember, uh, value just means how light or dark a color is. I'm going to take a little more red into that, a little touch of blue. I'm going to go darker yet, so don't go as dark as we can possibly go yet, but I'm taking more red and a little blue which is going to give me a color, maybe something about like this, give or take. Kind of a really dark brownish orange. We're just going to kind of continue this shape? Um, yes, but here's the key. Okay. I don't want to start right where I left off. If I start right here, it makes it hard to blend it into that. Um, I tell my students, I remember my grandmother used to knit me uh, yarn uh, mittens mm -hmm. with variegated yarn and it, you know how it flows from one color into the next, into the next seamlessly. If I start right here, it's hard to get that to fade in. I'm going to start way over here, and then I'm going to weave it. Now watch what happens. I've knocked most of the paint off the brush right here. By the time I get over here, if I just kind of go back and forth, as, oh, I'm, okay. as I'm tapping, they just weave together seamlessly. And I'll bring this color right down to the horizon line. I'm going to do this on the left-hand side of that sun as well as the right, which means I'll do some of it over here. So start out a little farther than you want it to go, and then you can s easily bleed it into the previous lighter color. See, that's going to set up a glow of that sunlight shining through there as we get darker as we go across and away from it. Yep. We're end up going to end up getting quite dark here before we're done, especially on the outer edges. like that.